Professor Mark Ganter at the University of Washington's Department of Mechanical Engineering is working to put rapid prototyping in the hands of students. He is experimenting with creating custom binders and ceramic powders made with affordable and accessible ingredients like sugar. Here he shows a student how to make the powder mixture used in the 3D printing process. The 3D printer has been filled with the ceramic powder and begins printing parts. A printer head lays down layer upon layer of binder ink, which solidifies the powder. After each pass, the build space moves down and the next layer is printed on top, resulting in a 3D object. You feel a little bit like an archaeologist doing this. Oh, there it is. The excess powder acts as a support structure for the prints. Finally, the rather light and porous ceramic objects can be infiltrated with wax, as with the more traditional powder printing methods. Or, the objects can be kiln-fired. Here a layer of alumina is poured into the lab kiln to prevent the pots from sticking to the bottom. The ceramic pot and calibration bars used for standardized tests are lowered into the kiln. So after about six hours or so, the uh, have the kiln lid propped up so it's nice and cool. And we can take a look. Wow, it looks beautiful. Uh, dust off the bottom. And we have a little printed pot. The calibration bars show the different responses to various firing methods and are sorted according to the kiln firing details. Professor Ganter and his students have been tracking the rate at which printed ceramic shrinks during the firing process to help understand how best to design and fire their ceramic objects. The Solheim Lab is an active space of hands-on learning. Students participate in all aspects of the rapid prototyping process and the ongoing experimentation with these technologies. As an experimental and digital artist, the Solheim Lab and the unique access to its machines and materials has allowed me to take my interest in exploring digital objects into new and exciting territory. While we can theorize about the implications of replicable digital objects, I believe it is through direct experience that we begin to understand the poetry invested in these processes. After printing, the porous objects are infused with wax to strengthen them. This cycle reminded me of encaustic painting, a method used for thousands of years to paint with beeswax and pigment. I've long been interested in the dialogue between humans and their emerging technologies. 3D printing allows me to experiment in a space where the digital becomes tangible with amazing implications. After mixing pigment and beeswax over heat and applying it to the surface of the 3D print, I then apply direct heat to help smooth the surface. The result is a series of works that allow me to explore the transformative potential of 3D printing, while at the same time coming to understand through experimentation the real and actual properties of these processes. Members of the University of Washington are diving into these resources, creating work that would be prohibitively expensive otherwise, and exploring in depth the wide potential of this transformative technology.